What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be looking over the new arrivals at Blade HQ. I like to do this periodically to help some people, you know, who are not aware of certain things that they might be interested in. I like to help identify that stuff. I'm going to scroll through. I'm not going to go over everything. I'm just going to highlight certain things that I find interesting and then I will link this stuff right down in the description. Metal Complex, we could just do this ourselves. I, yeah, you totally can. In fact, I'll make that easy on you. I'll link this page exactly right at the top of the description uh, so that it's uh, that it's the very first link and you can go look over that if you want to. Uh, but if you care to hear my commentary, that's what I'll be doing here today. Thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon right down in the description as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. Uh, looks like we've got some new tactile turnbolt action pens. I've had one of these before. They're really, really nice, and I like the sort of sleek, modern, should I say minimalist look to it? They're cool, and they're really not all that expensive if you're into pens. Um, I'm not the biggest, like, pen guy. I do think they're cool, though. So if you're looking for a nice pen, yeah, titanium, you've got zirconium, which is, ac that's actually really cool, but that's the most expensive one. <laughs> that's super cool. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, the Arcform Slimfoot Autos are back uh, for $165. This is a nice auto. If you like that kind of cleavery sheep's foot style blade, or if you've ever looked at the Arcform Slimfoot and thought, that's cool. Holy crap, it's expensive. Well, they did a collab with Protex. You can get a an automatic version of it, um, which is pretty neat. I want to say these are probably... Probably 154 CM, which is fine. Yep, 154 CM. I love 154 CM. It's still one of my favorite steels of all time. Seven and a quarter inches, so it's a nice size. Uh, these feel great. And they have Protex amazing firing power. Looks like there's a couple of different flavors there. So that's neat. Ah, here we go. The Spartan Talos and the, um, oh, wait. <laughs> this is, okay, here we, sorry. The, the colors messed me up. The Talos and the Aster are back. Uh, this is um, these are these are knives that are made by Spartan Blades, and the the Aster is actually a collaboration with Les George. The Talos is a smaller uh, Spartan Harzi, right? The main point here is that these are substantially more affordable than the you know the the four to five hundred dollar versions that you're seeing through uh, Spartan Harzi, which are fantastic, but not everybody can fork over that type of money for a knife. So um, I really enjoy these specifically. The Aster, these are running on Phosphor Bronze. They're CTS XHP, and uh, they're great. I, I really, really like these. For 145 bucks, I think these are good knives. Um, you can go back and check out my review on this if you'd like. I, I've handled it before. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, Benchmade Mini Freak Axis Lock in, I believe that's the M4 variant. These were gone for a bit, and then they came back. Oh, no. S90V. Okay. M4 and S90V. So, if you're wanting to get S90V, but the other mini freak that was S90V and carbon fiber, you were looking at that price and going, what the heck? Uh, here you go. Here's a less expensive version of it. That is an excellent small EDC knife. And I actually, if you like Jade, I do. Um, the new <clears throat> Kaiser Vanguard Sheepdog XLs. Uh, I meant to make a post about these uh, and just didn't. <laughs> so, if you've never taken a look at the Kaiser Vanguard Sheepdog XL, it is gigantic. It is huge. If you like almost novelty as not saying this can't be used. No, it definitely can be used. And it's a it's an absolute beast freak when it comes to breaking down cardboard boxes. Um, but if you uh, like the idea of kind of a novelty huge sh sheep's foot cleaver flipper, right? Uh, these are really cool. And they now come in a bunch of different flavors. I believe these are also 154 CM for 99 bucks. And they have the, man, hang on a second. Somebody in here gave this a one star review. And I know when I see that, it's just not, what is this? This is a beautiful knife, but it is by far the most uncomfortable knife I have ever handled. And it is so far my most hated knife of the year. Dude, not much contact uh, context here. <laughs> You're just like, I don't like how it feels. You didn't explain why. Don't always trust the reviews. <laughs> this is actually a really comfortable knife. I don't understand. That's just, oh, man. Sometimes I see that and I'm like, well, if you don't like it, that's fine. But you have to explain why. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. 
Anyways, okay. So moving back here, uh, I want you guys to take a look at the different flavors of these things. Here we go. Was I right here? Yeah, let's go move on right here. There we go. So like this one right here is gorgeous to me. Um, these are contour scales. They are my Carta. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys can see the lines that are <laughs> super accommodating for the human hand. Um, oh, do we have another? Is it the same one? No, it's it just applies to all of them. So anyways, CTS BD. Oh, these are CTS BD 1N. I was wrong about the 154 CM. But uh, yeah, different shades of micarta and this big uh, cle cleaver sheep's foot blade. These are super cool. Moving on here. Ah, uh, yeah, the CJRB Pilar. Um, I'm CJRB. CRKT. <laughs> CRKT Pilar 3. This snipe, gosh dang it, my phone, even when I'm recording on my computer, it still manages to buzz and go off. The CRKT Pilar 3 is vastly superior to the previous versions. The one was okay. The two, recommendable barely because it was an inexpensive knife so I could overlook the, in my opinion, obvious flaws of that design. This one takes care of pretty much everything. This is a super recommendable knife. I have handled it. Uh, I have actually reviewed it. You guys just haven't seen the review yet. It'll be coming soon. Spoiler alert, it's ridiculously recommendable. Steel frame lock, D2 steel running on bearings. The ergonomic lines are perfect. The positioning of the opening hole is perfect. I had very few, I had a little nitpick about the, the you know, angle on the, the frame lock, but that was about it. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is a, a super awesome knife and I don't have an issue with the price. Um, that is uh, definitely the ultimate Pilar so far, or Pilar, I always say that incorrectly. There are still a couple of XM18 3 inch Skinners floating around out there. Um, so yeah, take a look. And then if you want the true arc form slim foot, there's apparently one here. These are much more expensive, 300 bucks. Um, S35VN, titanium and micarta in this case, but depending on which version you're wanting, right? That's the uh, the true slim foot. Actually, I think it's based on a custom, but that's the production slim foot that is not as inexpensive as the production collaboration ProTech slim foot. <laughs> Moving on here, let's see what we've got that looks interesting. Uh, the new Benchmade bug out, uh, 535-3. That's the one in carbon fiber and S90V. Apparently, uh, if it can be built on the custom shop, it'll be a lot more expensive than that. And I don't think, somebody said that you can't select carbon fiber on a custom shop. So, you know, if you're wanting exactly this, that's the least expensive way to go. It's still very expensive, right? But it is cool. I've got one here that Benchmade sent and yeah, it's cool. Uh, still feels ultra lightweight without having that cheap drivery stuff. The Civivi Riffle. Um, I've got one of these coming in. This looks very interesting, especially this one right here. Yeah, Civivi Riffle 14C 28N. So uh, it, sometime in the future, I'm going to be um, doing a video on 14C 28N. I did some reading and some research on that steel about how well-rounded it is. I've always assumed that it was a good, like, yeah, it's a good budget steel, but... It turns out that that has some ridiculously excellent, um, like, rounded out qualities. Uh, the ratios between corrosion resistance, edge retention, toughness, ease of sharpening, hardness, all that, are really, really good on 14C28N. So I think I might be doing a most underrated steels video or something like that. Um, but just to let you guys know, whenever I see a knife in that steel, especially when it's a, bu when it's a budget knife, I get really excited. I have not handled this yet. 8 inch knife, 3 and a half inch blade, uh, 3 and a half inch cutting edge. Looks like it's got plenty of room there to do the reverse flick and all that stuff. Uh, looks like the pocket clip is good. Uh, actually, it looks like a great pocket clip. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a winner, but I can't say for sure until I handle it. Just wanted to let you guys know that it's there. These were kind of, the little OSS daggers were kind of intriguing, right? Ah, oh, the Badlands Vagabond. I finally got a chance to handle one of these. And uh, yeah, this is definitely a contender to the Ortis. This is basically the Ortis, except with a slightly different blade shape and thumb studs instead of the little opening slot. Some people are going to have an automatic preference for that. If you don't know, I named the Civivi Ortis the very best budget knife of all time and definitely the best budget knife of 2020. So it would make sense that if it had a contender, it would basically just be the same 
thing except with the th right i'm still kind of playing with it still kind of getting my thoughts on it but it is definitely definitely good the review is going to be extremely positive right the only question is is it actually do i actually think it's for me the only question is do i actually think it's better than the orders uh the we knife fornix that was in is this is this ferrum forge god it looks like ferrum forge is it not Okay, interesting. Anyways, it sure does look neat. I kind of like the harpoon style blade. Straight lines, forward choil. Yeah, it looks nice. CPM 20 CV. Looks like a, a good build from Wii. Uh, there's not much to say there because I haven't handled it. Let's see. Uh, do these have... Sorry, I just want to look at the steel real quick. I want to make sure that it's still... Yeah, it's still S35BN. That's a nice looking version of that. Uh, the gray G10. Um, that's definitely a little few more flavors of those are coming out. Civivi Brazen Tanto. Ah, the Mini Doman in Jade. That looks kind of nice. Where's the one? Uh, the one I was looking for was the M390 variant. But here's some more Arc Form Slimfoots. A whole bunch of them. Titanium, carbon fiber, carbon fiber and titanium. Titanium and I don't know what that is. Maybe copper or brass. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So there you go, Arc Form Slim Foots. I remember when I did that video and people were like, I can't get it! Where is it? Here's the M390 Beglitter. Um, Beglitter, yeah. Holy cow! M390 and G10. The Beglitter is a great design. It's really good. I like the Jade. Some people don't, but god dang. On this design, thumb stud opener, fully flat ground blade, a little over 8 inches, right? 99 bucks. Yeah, that's a winner, uh, 100%. That geometry is going to couple great with um, uh, with uh, M390. What is this? This looks interesting. The James Brand, James Brand the Carter, Ambi Slider. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me. It's intriguing, except for the fact that VG10 for 160. No, that should have been a different steel. Um, we, I mean, I don't. I'm not saying VG10 is a bad steel, but like it, it, VG10 will work. It's just not a generally accepted steel in this price range by the vast majority of the knife community. Um, with a different steel, that would have looked much more interesting. Absolutely, S35 VN. Throw 154 CM on there. I would have been more interested. VG10, it's fine. It'll work. Not the type of steel I want to see at 160 bucks, but that design is intriguing. I'll, I'll be honest there. Ah, uh, I've been trying to get my hands on this. <laughs> the Ferrum Forge uh, Mini Archbishop in Nitro V. Yeah, I would really like to get my hands on this. This looks cool. I have not um, uh, handled the uh, the the one that I the one that I handled the similar one was the one without the slot. So it's a little different than this, 6.375. But because you have that, and that's an overall length, by the way, because you have that forward choil, I should be able to, I'm thinking I should be able to get a full grip. Nitro V is an interesting steel. One that has a lot of variance in performance if you look on the internet. Um, different channels have tested different knives with different heat treats and get, you get you know vastly different reports. Obviously, any blade steel that's heat treated differently, right? It's going to change. Composition doesn't provide static performance, you know. And then if you look at knife steel nerds, um, it will show a totally different story in terms of edge retention. You know, so it, it's kind of it, it's all over the place. I'm I'm I tend to lean towards what Laren Thomas says because he's a, a, a metallurgist. Um, and uh, there's a lot of extensive research that goes into that. But yeah, it's it's interesting though. Concept Mujir, which is how I'm pronouncing it, is great. Uh, it's a little bit sharp on some of the edges here, but this guy is orange peel textured titanium, which is something that you do not see at the $200 price point. I remember when that was exclusive to a much higher price point. Um, shard and all gray titanium. I think we've seen that before. Concept Main Street. This is the larger guy. I love this. This is excellent. For 79 bucks, 154 CM, and your choice of carbon fiber, different colors of micarta, and then either a tumbled or black blade, right? Whatever it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, recommendable for sure. I also reviewed the Prickle. Uh, pretty good. We'll let you guys wait to see that review. Um, this guy, CJRB Feldspar. 
Blade HQ exclusive in S35 VN. Yes. Yes to this. Uh, 80 bucks for a knife that I've... I, I think the Feldspar is one of the best budget knives of all time. It's an excellent design. The standard version of this knife comes in at like 45 to 50 bucks. Pay, you know, 30 bucks more and get it in S35VN in this cool black and jade combo. Yeah. Yes. That's cool. I'd like to get my hands on one. <laughs> but yeah, very cool. I think that looks nice. Yeah. At least a couple different... There's the one that I was thinking of, right? The red G10, but... We've got the standard blue and the green, and then there's a burlap or linen. I guess it's linen micarta, but um, I feel like there's some more out there too. Anyways, there's there's more QSP penguins in different flavors available right now. Sorry, I, did, I made it seem like there was there's so many and there's three. <laughs> Sorry, that's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Like I said, the stuff that I was really interested in that I highlighted here, I will be linking right down below in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. This is fun for me to do periodically. Just that I'm constantly checking retailers, new arrivals and stuff like that. And I kind of wait until there's a bunch of stuff that I think a lot of you guys might be interested in. You know, kind of like I said at the beginning, this video is not for everybody. You know, some of you guys do this, you know, all the time too. So none of this will come as a surprise to you. But as I found from doing these types of videos in the past, the vast majority of the people who watch my channel are not aware of a lot of this stuff. So this is helpful for people trying to figure out, you know, what their next purchase is going to be, whether it's going to be an expensive knife or an inexpensive knife. I think that's pretty much it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you guys enjoyed this video or at least found it mildly entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.